All right. Hey everyone, I'm Hassan Minhaj. I'm joined by Riz Ahmed and Anil Karia, the creators of the amazing short film, The Long Goodbye. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Um, so look, look, I'm a big fan of the film. I've seen it multiple times. One of the things I love most about the film is how many different tones you're juggling just in one short film, and we can get into that. But before we get to that, just tell me about the creative process. How did you guys meet? How did you come up with the idea? And then executing it. Tell us kind of the origin story of how this all went down. Well, um, yeah, thanks, Hassan. So, so, so it began with it began with Riz and I being introduced. Actually, we we didn't we didn't really know one another, you know, uh, until shortly before we, we we started making this film. Really, uh, a mutual friend of ours, another director called Jan Demange, introduced us. Um, I was obviously very familiar with Riz and his work, and, and a great great fan of his. Um, and I think we went out for dinner with Jan. We, we we talked. We got to know each other a little bit. And then shortly after that, Riz came to me with uh, with this idea to make to make a film together. And, and the brief was kind of wide open. Um, he'd seen something. He'd seen a short film I'd made with Kano, a, a rapper and actor who I worked with on Top Boy. And and he 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 liked what he saw. And he wanted to he wanted to kind of make something. In, in the least kind of kind of calculated methodical kind of industry development kind of traditional tra development way possible he wanted to just have a conversation find out what was kind of fueling us at that moment or, or and and kind of organically figure out what to make i suppose and through a series of conversations you know let's just sat down in in various cafes over cups of tea um, we began to have that conversation and and f discover the kind of our, our own Venn diagram, and and uh, it, you know it turned out there was a, a lot of common ground in terms of what what we were thinking about, what was we, we were deeply concerned about, what was giving us anxiety at night, what was creatively you know energizing us, and all of that. It felt like there was a lot of common ground there, so. It, it, it very quickly felt like a a collaboration that was kind of quite quite rich with possibilities. I think, you know, to me, one of the things I love most about the film, great filmmaking, is about tone. And one of the things you both have done brilliantly in this film, you know, Neil, is it, you juggled three different types of tones in the film. Can you take us through that a little bit? Because what I saw in Act One it really feels like a family comedy. It just feels like I'm kicking it at a dava. I've, I've been to like so many aunties and uncles and I've been to family members' houses. Like this dava is, is like a Urdu Hindi way of saying just like family party, just like a family function. I've, I've been to places like this where you, you, multiple conversations are happening in real time. And then it quickly pivots to act two and it's a hard pivot into this almost like a surreal, horrific event. And then act three of the film really feels poetic. It almost feels like a poetry like performance. Take us through that. How do you come up with that concept? How did you juggle multiple different tones in one film? Um, because I thought it was so such an interesting choice to make. Well, I just want to say that's really all Anil. You know, when we, when we met up and we realized we were both had similar things on our mind and we, we got along so well, it kind of encouraged us both to make something very, very personal. And I guess, you know, we, we made this film about the, the, the kind of nightmare scenario in a way that keeps us up, up at night, but to try and tell it as a story that has some kind of defiance within it um, and heart within it. Um, and it's interesting because Anil works in a very detailed, but also very loose way, if that makes sense. He makes like an Excel spreadsheet of like what the scenes are and what basically happens in them. It doesn't do a script. And similarly, you know, he'd write out like a couple of pages of just basically what happens. You read it on the paper. And in a way, even though it's so kind of um, sparse, it's still very, very emotional because it's very clear. You know, the emotional arc is very clear. Putting that onto screen then is like a whole other process and actually I didn't quite realize how many different tones that we're going to be bridging in this film until we turn up on the day. And I'm like, how the hell are we going to do this? 
like, wait, it's, you, I'm going to be improvising now and cracking jokes. And I'd be saying, shouldn't I be signposting what's going to happen a little bit, getting a bit serious, dropping some symbolic references in dialogue. He's like, no, just talk about moving the chair. Just trust me. Keep. Mm. He goes, I want it to be as boring as possible. Every day as possible. He's kept like, I just like, think I'm throwing out genius improv ideas. He's like, no, keep it simple. Keep it real. I'm like, all right, cool. I know if this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> Turns a corner from there. All of a sudden it all starts kicking off into this crazy set, like almost action horror sequence. And by the end, you know, we are almost doing this poetry performance. I, I actually don't know how he did it. Um, I think for, for me, there's a consistency of like the way, and you know, and he'll shot the piece and it feels consistently realistic, even though we enter these very different moods. And, um, and I think that's what Anil does so brilliantly is he keeps it so grounded, even as crazy stuff is happening on screen. So um, I was very much just put myself in Anil's hands. And I guess I'm as surprised as you are in a way, Hassan, because reading on the page and thinking, yeah, this makes sense, yeah to turning up on set and going, how the hell are we going to turn all these corners? To then watching it at the end, it's really a kind of a tour de force in how he's done it. Well, thanks for it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I was thinking that, that the first step to making something that shifted tones like that was kind of the, 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 the manner in which we figured it out together. Because, I, you know, I think if it, when you're, like I said, it, it kind of went against the grain of traditional development uh, um in the way that you might do if you're approaching a television job or a kind of a, a film job that you're coming on board to it, it there was a kind of real because of the way we approached it and the kind of freedom riz wanted to kind of create with what what shape this idea took um it meant there was just so much freedom and and the freedom to kind of be bold and like push the boundaries a little bit um so, so, so I think the, the kind of the way in which we went about figuring out this film allowed for those kind of slightly um, risk, risky kind of choices of like, okay, let's try and subvert genres, let's flip tones and things like that. Um, I think what I knew from the get go was that um, we were clearly dealing with um, big kind of powerful and quite evocative kind of themes um provocative even maybe and and what I, did, what, what I was quite keen we didn't do was um make a terribly kind of earnest uh educational piece on these terrible um uh kind of challenging issues and and kind of take that kind of worthy tone where we're kind of preaching or kind of you know um I I, I thought it, it has to be all kind of feeling based and, and it has to be an emotional experience and um and it has to be as emotional experience as possible basically and, was that so, your, was that one of your intentions one of the things i love most about the way the film opens it almost feels like we're dropped in we're dropped in the yeah, living room right, exactly. right riz is kind of you know shadow boxing playing with like a young family member the girls are in the other room we're crossing we're talking like there is no kind of lengthy introduction into it. It's that feeling of just full immersion. Was that a, a conscious choice that you made? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You wanted to feel like this was any other five minutes in any other, you know, British Asian home in, in any other town. And that was part of the inspiration for kind of how we began this film. It was that we felt like again and again and again, we saw kind of slightly lazy, tropey, shorthand depictions of British Asian families on the screen and none of these quite rang true for us and our experiences and our kind of family histories and things. So um, getting that nuance right um, was, was of key importance. And as, as you touched on this sound, like getting that right was, was absolutely key in order to then shift it into a much more jarring and, yeah. and intense and kind of heightened tone where the violence comes in. But, but like Riz touched upon, I, I thought that the way to get that nuance and detail right was actually not pushing humour at every opportunity, not pushing kind of drama or emotion at every opportunity. It was to bed into that kind of everyday thing. And, and, where there's, and, and that what everyday means is sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's a little bit acerbic, occasionally it's funny, um, sometimes it's full of love, sometimes people are getting pissed off with each other. You know, like it's that kind of like, 
messy mix that kind of yeah. that, that's the way to reality i suppose so yeah i, I think that that's was the, that was i think game. i think that is the key i think that is the key to how neil has managed to bridge all these very different tones as you put it hassan is that is keeping it so realistic and so grounded throughout even if kind of crazy things are happening and one thing i just want to say is about that opening sequence i've had people come up to me and say that this film has moved them to tears and i always presume that it's about you know what happens in the second half of the piece but actually i've had a couple of people say to me no it's the opening i've just never seen a family like that on screen a family like mine they just feel so real and actually yes there is there's trauma there's something quite there's a bit of a gut punch at the heart of this film but there's also a lot of joy at the start yes. and there's also a lot of defiance at the end and i think it's really important that you know you know to tell stories in some level to be an artist is to name your pain and and when you when you tell a story you can kind of shape it and and, and i kind of feel like yes there is pain in the in the heart of this film but there's also defiance at the end of it there's joy at the start of it and it allows us to kind of um I know there's something healing about that, about, about making this film. It certainly feels like one of the most healing creative processes and one of the most fulfilling <clears throat> projects I've ever been a part of. I, I couldn't agree with that more, man. I think act three resonates. The soliloquy you have in act three resonates because of how, and I mean this in a good way, mundane, normal, and beautiful the first part of the film is. So you have that really great dynamic range. Um, and I think, you know, Anil, you did such a great job with casting. Those characters, that family we see at the beginning, tell me more about how you cast that world because for, for you to jump genres like that, it's only, it's only gonna pay off if you have great casting and a great family to begin with. Tell us a little bit about that because, you know, I've, I've definitely worked in projects where they're trying to depict a South Asian family and it just doesn't feel like a real family at all. Yeah, I think we've, we've all seen that, right? And, and uh, yeah, so the, obviously that was of huge importance. We, we were lucky enough to work with uh, casting UK casting director Shaheen Baig, who's done some incredible projects. And in fact, Riz, Riz had worked with her before. I think I, I hadn't had the opportunity, but I'd kind of always wanted to. Um, and yeah, finding it was a real mix, you know, some, some Riz knew, some Riz had, had prior experience of working with. One some... of them was my uncle. One of them was straight yeah, up right, my mom. Yeah. yeah, my mom's brother. Um, <laughs> the guy who plays my dad is my uncle. Yo, that's a ballsy so, choice. Yeah, I... we kind of had to, like you said, you've got to make it feel real, right? And I just knew that if we, you know, brought real family to the table, that would pay off as well. Riz, that's gutsier than any of your work. That's gutsier than the work that you did in the night <laughs> because up. You know, no one's out there to sabotage you like your uncle. Oh, bro. I mean, come on, man. You're he mixing art. He was ready. <laughs> Business with family? Like, it can go left, right, and center, bro. That's a strong <laughs> sure, choice. And, and Neil, you were very particular, right, about who you were, you, who you were casting. Yeah, I mean, thinking about that, there was such a mix. You know, there were trained, uh, traditionally trained actors. There were people who'd come into it through different routes. There were non-actors, like Riz's uncle. Um, there were young people completely, you know, fresh to the, to the like industry and everything. Uh, but it was, it was really just about in quite a condensed amount of time, finding people who, who first of all, uh, had that improvisational instinct and like Riz was touching upon. I was very adamant that that doesn't mean filling every silence with like poetry or geni genius kind of lines or like, you know, uh, hilarious gags and things like that. Like that it was about actually having the confidence to embrace silences sit back speak over each other you know it, it was about having the confidence to understand that everyday improvisation is kind of imperfect i suppose and uh so, so first of all that instinct and then obviously find, trying to find this 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 the, the right dynamic between this family um and i i you know we, we we were lucky so lucky to find find people with such talent such amazing actors for, for that it's, it's, with such kind of brought such nuance to it yeah so i was just going to say it's also really interesting the way neil directs actors 
because we spend a lot of time, he spends a lot of time casting, spends a lot of time on set design, spends a lot of time on location, spends a lot of time making sure this feels set up in a way that is as absolutely real as possible. And then he really kind of gives us the confidence to, as you said, to, to not have to push the story forwards and to just be. And it's amazing actually how quickly the shoot moves because of that, because it's just set up with such a tone of, um, of effortlessness in a way. It just kind of goes so quickly. And when I think about how quickly we shot this film, we shot it over two days, which were the short, two shortest days of the year um, in December. <clears throat> I think we, we, we had very little time to shoot this. And when I think about how quickly we flew through it, I think so much of it is about him as a director lighting it in such a way where, <clears throat> excuse me, we can just live in the space and just be there and improvise and move freely and then just allows us to kind of fly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we lit the spaces 360 and kind of designed the places 360 so that every room was, you know, Riz and, and, and the family on screen had complete freedom of that home. It was their home, essentially, you know, and they could live in it and they could make decisions instinctively about where to go. And, nothing, and it wasn't about blocking things into specific quadrants of rooms, you know, that were lit, you know, um, that were ready, etc. The whole place was ready. It was their home. And, and you know, as much as as possible, they, they could inhabit that home as a family. So one of the things that I thought you did so, so well, and you'll also tell me about this choice. A lot of the, the film is shot pretty tight. You know, you shoot Riz and the, some of the characters really tight, especially in act two and act three. Um, what informed that choice? Was it to kind of just show the the just the raw primal energy of those moments? Um, yeah, that was definitely part of it. And 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 I guess you know it, it it doesn't sound particularly groundbreaking, but it was just it was to be inside it, you know, rather than outside it observing. It was to be it was to con be consumed kind of within it rather than observing with traditional coverage where okay let's right. cut just super wise. So, yeah it's a it's a pretty in, it's a very intimate in terms of the way yeah yeah and and kind of um be as experiential as possible you know like um i think you had to be taken you had to feel like part of that family in the first act you had to feel the kind of horror that they were feeling in the second act and you had to feel like riz was speaking right to you in the in the third act so it just felt kind of antithetical to the whole ethos of the film to start uh, to taking a kind of traditional coverage route where it's like, okay, why don't we go over there now and get some, uh, it, I've found an interesting kind of wide here, or I've found an interesting- Yeah, um, it, it, it wasn't know, shot over the like, shoulder one, over the shoulder two wide, like you weren't shooting- Exactly, that. exactly. It and, really and, felt- you know, That's massively credit to the DOP who I work with a lot as well, who, 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 who just wants to like breathe the, the, the the narrative and the action and the, yeah, the experience it was kind of like a almost like a dance you know at the end that third act when we're doing the poetry piece it's um we had we had two takes at that the sun was setting uh, at the time it was like we are losing the light in real time yeah. and um and it was just such a kind of instinctive kind of dance we didn't choreograph it at all in terms of where he would be where i'd be when i turned to camera and we just kind of felt that out so um yeah, I think there's something, this is, I think there is something so instinctive to Anil's filmmaking. And as you put it also, there's an intimacy to it that you get in those close up shots. But from that intimacy comes high energy intensity. And I think it's quite rare to see, see the combination of those two together, that intimacy with that, with that energetic, you know, uh, intensity. Obviously, I've, I've told you how it's the film has affected me, the way it's imprinted on me. What do you hope people take away from the film? I guess I'll just say that this is something we made very much in a way because it's just where we were at in our hearts and our heads at that time with everything that was going on in the world and politically and literally the kind of thoughts that were keeping us up at night. It's kind of warning sign for like where we're headed in a way. And, um, and so it was just good to get it off our chest, you know, speaking for myself, um, I never imagined it would have had the response it's had and with it being kind of mentioned in British Parliament and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
I, I guess, if I'm honest, I hope it is a bit of a wake up call, but I hope more than anything that people walk away from this film recognizing what a tremendous talent Anil Karia is. I think he's one of our great filmmakers, you know, in, in the making. Um, and then that's, that's for me, I've left this going, wow, that was one of the most amazing creative experiences and products and products of, of my life, you know, so that's the, that's one of the takeaways for me. Yeah. And like Riz says, in the reaction from universally has been unbelievable, but it was particularly touching, you know, the reaction from the British Asian community and, and just, um, like Riz said, it wasn't just about the raw punch of the second act. It was so much just about seeing uh, themselves on screen, you know, honestly and with, um, and yeah, in an honest way. And, and we, I, the first, first time I'm kind of thinking about it, and maybe this doesn't make sense, I'm not sure, but there is a, kind of something defined about the first act as well, because it's like, it's almost poses the question, what is there to have a problem with 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 this do you know what i mean what can what can you possibly what issue can you possibly have with this you know do you know what i mean like just how normal and mundane it full is. of like love and you know affection and normality and you know yeah. well gentlemen thank you so much for your amazing work the long goodbye super inspiring singular in nature just tremendous job and uh Thank you so much for doing it for the culture and for the community. Thank you, son. Thank you, son. Appreciate that. Appreciate you guys.